when you look at the uh, runtime or the computational structure of these problems, we introduce the following types of uh, classification. Um, one important class is PP, pleasingly parallel, or sometimes embarrassingly parallel. Or sometimes, if you're thinking from a map produce point of view, you call this the map only um, category. All the uh, independent, all the entities involved in this uh, type of calculation, although they all come from the same application, they effectively in the, can be processed independently. Well, that's why it's pleasingly parallel. There are no uh, difficult um, synchronization problems. Then we have um, MapReduce, which we'll cover um, more than once in this class, and it's given in much more detail in the cloud computing class in this uh, data science curriculum. Uh, out of the fifth, so PP, pleasing in parallel, was around eight. Um, MapReduce is um, 16. Uh, of the 51, we could use a MapReduce paradigm. MRStat is a variant of the MapReduce paradigm where the reductions are particularly simple as they're just global sums. 19 of the applications involve with so called iterative MapReduce. Um, they have the map followed by a reduced uh, structure, but they don't stop there, they iterate it because the um, Algorithm is not finished after one wave of maps followed by one wave of reduces. <laughs> now the graph, which is a data structure, and the things in these nodes are what we get parallelism over, um, or the sets of nodes we get parallelism over. Uh, they actually need different runtime. Um, there is a famous uh, run, uh, Apache project called Giraffe. Which is a graph processing uh, runtime. Um, fusion is another important area. So, good. this is just a, a short term for data fusion, which means that you have an application which has lots of different types of data. And to really understand what's going on, you have to combine these different types of data. Um, if you were a commander in a battle, uh, you would be receiving information from your. Um, um, Weather group about the weather outside. You'll be hearing from all your different uh, spy satellites uh, on eavesdropping uh, communications among the uh, enemy forces. And you'd have local videos uh, recording what was going on the, on the battlefield. So in order to make decisions, you would need to integrate and fuse all that data in a fashion which allows these decisions to be made, or the, the case of a scientific application discovery to be made. And so fusion is a very important uh, general capability. Uh, something which is um, important when it's needed, but uh, not um, always present is so-called Monte Carlo simulation. The particle physics application is notable that it actually needs uh, as much computing to do so-called Monte Carlo simulations as it does to observe the actual, um, process the actual data itself. Um, so Monte Carlo simulation generates fake data. Uh, and this is used to essentially debug your entire analysis process. And to calculate uh, the reliability of it. <coughs> You typically need a lot of um, such events to be able to get a good, um, um, solid number for the reliability, which will depend on the type of event you're observing. Another uh, hot topic is streaming. Apache has uh, th three uh, streaming projects, Storm, S4, and SAMHSA. And uh, that means that the data isn't just one giant block of data. It might be that, but there's also streaming, namely data coming in and individual data points which need to be processed. And they don't, they're not just accumulated for some giant batch run with all the data. Here is, a, that was sort of the low level runtime, the nature of the parallelism. 
at the higher level, we have we introduced the following types of, of characterization. Uh, not surprisingly, a lot of the um, applications involve classifying or characterizing uh, data, dividing into clusters, dividing uh, news into topics, uh, telling uh, uh, the user of an uh, e commerce site what they really ought to be looking at, so classifying items into interesting and uninteresting. So that's 20 out of the 51. Uh, a lot, of course, involves search and query. You have a big data set of diverse types, and then you need to search that data set and uh, according to special user queries. Uh, often that is enhanced by finding indices, because indices are essentially a way of speeding up search. Collaborative filtering is a critical technology used in recommender engines. And we have four such use cases. Machine learning, uh, this is an underestimate of the number of um, machine learning um, use cases. In a lot of cases, the use case didn't give me enough detail to really pin down the nature of the machine learning, so I left it off. Um, support vector machines, clustering, those are effectively machine learning algorithms. Latent Dirichlet allocation here is uh, slightly less well known. Uh, uh, machine learning uh, approach. Um, in the case of machine learning, we will find there's uh, two important differences, different types of use. The simplest, often associated with the pleasingly parallel model, is the machine learning is uh, applied separately to every data point being processed, or every small set of data points being data being processed together. So those are called local. Um, they, they're not, they tend not to involve any parallel computing. It's the parallelisms over those points. But if you are doing the machine learning out over an individual point, then you're going to be running it on the sequential machine. Uh, the, uh, the other category here is obviously the opposite of local is global. That says the machine learning involves simultaneous variation of the features of many um, of the data points. We're here are called items. And that a global consideration needs to be done over everything. Often those generate iterative MapReduce style computations. Um, machine learning is typically used in classification. That's why I say the five is smaller than the 20. That says that uh, there was not enough detail for me to, to actually find out what was being done. We have this peculiar classification called exascale global optimization, which is a rather whimsical way of referring to large scale optimizations, often set up as a sum over data taken across the web. And there are various uh, nifty ideas here variational base method, lifted belief, stochastic gradient descent, multi dimensional staling. Uh, machine learning, uh, the global machine learning is always ends up as sort of ego, because machine learning is a t always essentially an optimization algorithm. Uh, LF, LBFGS is a particular um, gradient descent algorithm. And all of these are just examples of ego applications. You have giant optimizations down across all possible variables. Um, an important uh, computational type is expectation maximization. And it's often used in machine learning to calculate, especially the global, effectively the global ones, uh, because you'll need an iterative approach to solve it. And expectation maximization is the natural uh, um, iterative algorithm. Uh, GIS is very important. Lots of these big data are associated with space and time either on Earth or in, the, or in the cosmos. And that gives you geotag data. And then you use these tools like Google Earth or the ASHRAE, um, Archeum Co, et cetera, products to uh, display them. Uh, then we come to high performance computing. Several of the use cases involve both high performance computing, producing data, and high performance computing to produce models which can be compared with data. And then the last class is agent-based computing, where uh, you're 
agents are used uh, when you have uh, trying to produce a model of some sort of large macroscopic entity, uh, such as a person or a vehicle. That's when you say doing a transportation model for a city. And then you would use agent-based computing.